Now, we mentioned the odds of winning Mega Millions, right? One in about 303 million. How about the odds of getting hit and killed by Chinese space junk? Yikes. Thank goodness your odds of winning the Mega Millions are actually a lot higher than that. But we mentioned this because a 25-ton Chinese rocket booster will likely crash onto Earth as early as tomorrow. No one knows exactly when or where, including the Chinese. According to the latest data from the Aerospace Corporation, the 25-ton rocket booster will enter the Earth's atmosphere tomorrow around 2.05 p.m. Eastern, give or take five hours. Now, luckily, your odds of getting crushed by the rocket are low. It's less than one in a billion. As we mentioned, winning the Mega Millions, one in 303 million, while your chances of being bitten by a shark, say, is one in four million, Unfortunately, that's a lot higher than both the rocket and Mega Million. So I want to bring in Ken Kremer. He is the managing editor of SpaceUpClose.com. Ken, thanks so much for being here. Oh, thanks for having me. You know, and Ken I have a lottery ticket, too. Oh, you <laughs> do? Have you already checked the numbers? Are you a winner? I haven't. I haven't. I'm listening to your, to your conversation, so I haven't had a chance to check it yet. Oh, the suspense. Well, Ken, you know, at least you're more likely to win Mega Millions than be hit with space junk, right? Uh, yes, yes, exactly. That, that, that's right. Um, but we have to take it seriously because what the Chinese have done here is extremely irresponsible. They've launched this rocket, launching a, a space station module, and now it's coming back and there's an uncontrolled reentry. They're, they're like the only country, is space power in the world, I should say, that does this. Everybody else controls the reentry and they dump them into the Pacific. So while your chances is maybe one in a billion, it's not it's not zero. And the thing is, this is totally avoidable if they had um, programmed their rocket correctly. Well, yeah. So in all seriousness, I mean, NASA has been calling on the Chinese for some no time now to change their rocket design so that the pieces are small enough to burn up upon reentry and not be so dangerous. Really no movement on that. So can they just keep doing this to us they can and they will in fact this is going to happen again in october so this was the second state space station module they launched there's another one coming up the third one coming up around october so the whole thing is going to happen again now the chinese you know they're actually very capable technically they're able to build these space stations they're able to land rovers on mars with high precision so to me, there's no reason why they cannot aim these rockets properly and bring them down in such a way that it wouldn't be harmful to people. So it, they can do it. They just choose not to. Why they choose not to is, is really, truly a mystery. Is there any because recourse? Because they generated a lot of ill will. Yeah, I, absolutely. So Ken, is there any recourse or is it just we have to wait until they find the goodwill in their own hearts to make a redesign? There is no recourse except to criticize them and hope that they change their ways. I, I just, you know, they want to use space in positive ways, so I just don't understand why they, they keep doing this. And um, it, it just doesn't make any sense. You know, they want international participation in their space station and their other space programs. Uh, they want to have a good uh, reputation, but this gives them a bad reputation. So to me, it, it just doesn't make any sense. Ken, NASA I hear, I hear you. Them, other countries have, and, and rightly so. I hear your bafflement. And um, can we talk a little bit about this rocket's current trajectory? We saw one potential path having it potentially hitting Salt Lake City. Can you talk a little bit about well, that? Well, yeah, you have the diagram there. Uh, what that actually means is... Uh, it's not just Salt Lake City, it's the whole southern half of the United States. In fact, where I'm at, at the Kennedy Space Center nearby, we're in that track in Florida. I think you're in Chicago, so you're okay, according to that map. Um, Europe is okay, but most of China, most of Africa, all of South America is all in that track. So it's not just one particular spot. It's like 80% of the earth is in that track. 80% of the populated areas are in that track. Okay, so, so in all seriousness, let's say, and this is my last question, but if, if this does come down on land instead of water, and, and fortunately it does seem more likely to come down in water than land, will we get any kind of warning? And how big is this? How catastrophic could it be if it lands in a populated area? Well, if it landed in a populated area, it would be pretty bad. People could potentially die, property could be destroyed, buildings damaged. 
you know, it's five tons of, of space debris coming out and coming down at hundreds of miles an hour. So that's extremely dangerous. It's like uh, Ken, that's very bleak. That's... Ukraine and those and those and those apartment complexes and buildings. So it'd be extremely serious if you were if you were in the way. So you know that's why it, it's irresponsible for them to do it. And I just can't understand why they keep doing that. Ken, would we get warning before we that will happens? get almost no warning at all because it all depends on the drag and the atmospheric density. So. Tomorrow morning, they're going to have another report out, and they'll be able to refine it uh, a little bit. So there'll be a slight warning of maybe an hour or so, maybe two hours, but but that's about it. And it'll still be a very long track, thousands of miles. So no, there will never be any um, precise estimate of exactly where it's coming down. Again, it, I'm, I'm smiling, not because this is funny, but because this is such a bummer, <laughs> quite frankly. Yeah. Um, can I learn something tonight? And and if we can uh, make a call here for the for the Chinese to uh, not keep doing this, that would be great. I that would be great. And if I could not do the story with you again in October, that would be wonderful. Um, Ken Kremer, we certainly appreciate your time. Thank you so much.